so welcome to the Stories of Northern Life podcast, and thanks for joining me today. Well, thanks for having me. This is a real pleasure. <laughs> Good. Um, so first, can I get you to introduce yourself in your own words? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Jessica Fazell, and I publish poetry under JL Fazell, which is a pen name I picked out when I think it was eight or nine. I, I've known that I was going to be an author my whole life. Um, I didn't know I was going to be a poet, but I knew I was going to write a book. And uh, I write poetry inspired by life in Northern Ontario and kind of meditating on nature and going out into the forest or just sitting in a park looking at trees and kind of trying to figure out what I can learn about myself and the greater whole just by meditating and kind of thinking about those things. That's beautiful. Beautiful. So where are you from? I'm originally from Timmins, Ontario. Um, Sault Ste. Marie has been kind of dragging me in slowly my whole life. Though. I remember the first time I visited, I think again, eight or nine, um, we had friends who had a, a family house out in Gooley and I fell in love. I'm like, what is this magical place? <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and then I ended up coming back for college and university, moved home for a couple of years and then ended up back here again for the last five, about four or five years. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Um, so when was the first time you heard or learned about poetry? And was that the start of your personal poetry journey or was it a different time? So I feel like you probably did write poetry before this and just didn't care. We will do the acrostic <laughs> poems in school with your name and you write a poem about who you are. Yep. Um, that one didn't excite me. <laughs> no. um, but I remember the first time in grade six, my, um, my teacher had us write a poem I, I don't you just write a poem and that was the the assignment he taught us about poetry and the different styles and rhyming and uh, so I had fun writing it and of course <laughs> enough, my first poem was about nature <laughs> Go figure, right? and uh, long story short I ended up winning an award from the Ontario English Teachers Council or the Northern Ontario English Teachers Council wow. and their Northern Light series I ended up winning the best poem on the theme of the environment oh, <laughs> and it was published in a book series along with all the other winners that year and oh. something just clicked that year and poetry kind of stuck for me as uh as just something I loved awesome so what has kept you going in poetry um I'll be honest I've kind of like waxed and waned through my, my journey with poetry um so I, I started off at grade six I was writing for a couple of years and then somebody somewhere along the way cracked a joke. I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. And the little Jess was just like, I'm, I'm so hurt right now. <laughs> and they kept picking on me for being a poet. Nothing bad, but you know, like school yeah. fun, right? And uh, so I'm just like, oh, okay. Well, maybe poets kind of, poetry is kind of nerdy and I don't want to do this anymore. So I went through high school uh, writing lyrics for my friend's band nice. and, um, you know, sending out lyrics to different bands that I knew like, hey, do you like my stuff? No. And uh, still trying to convince myself that it wasn't poetry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it was very similar, if not arguably the same, just yeah. different, uh, different structures. And then... Um, and then again, my 20s, I kind of, I don't know where it came from. Just one day I sat down and started writing and it kind of made sense. And uh, it wasn't a whole lot, but here and there, the odd poem would kind of make its way onto paper. Right. And, yeah. That's awesome. So awesome. Um, so your author poet name, yeah. what was the story behind that? Um, so grade four, I think. My teacher, and I, I wish I remembered his name so I could credit him this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, credit him with this, because everyone I've told this story to is like, wow, what a great teacher. And I, I can't for the life of me remember his name. <laughs> but I want him to know that he had an influence on me. Um, assigned a story, and so we watched this video, and it was a French video, and we had to finish the story. And I just, I fell in love with the idea of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And then my mom gifted me her old typewriter. So there I was, <laughs> eight or nine years old, banging away on a little, little typewriter, trying to tell my own stories and come up with these like crazy magical worlds that, wow. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is that what you originally thought you would write? You would yeah, write? so I started off wanting to tell stories yeah. and uh, I spent a lot of time in the forest with my dad, hunting and fishing, blueberry picking, all the, yeah. all the things you think of when you think of <laughs> Ontario. <laughs> And uh, my, my, my imagination would just run wild. Like, I would pretend that I was, like, some fairy princess taking care of the bunnies and the yeah. trees and everything and make up my own stories in the woods and then try and go home and, and put it back on the paper. That's magical. <laughs> That's so magical. But I still feel like you still are a storyteller through your poetry, for yeah. sure. You, it's just a different form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of telling my own story. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not fairy princesses, but that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so what has kept you 
under that name, I guess. Um, so there's there's a couple pieces to that. There's a nod to little Jess and just yeah. staying true to those dreams and that like it might not happen right away, but if you stick with something that that you'll get there. And it might not look the way you thought it would, but it's still it's still good. And then the other piece of that is um, I loved Anna Green Gables growing up. That was one of my favorite series, and something about Anne just really resonated with me, probably because she was out in the forest yeah. doing, <laughs> doing the same thing I was. Um, but L.M. Montgomery published under that, and I remember reading when I was little that women couldn't publish back in, in the day. Right. Um, when I say back in the day, obviously they grew up like pre-1900s, right? And uh, so they couldn't publish, so they are either publishing under men's names or using their initials. And I was like, cool, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and at the time, I didn't really understand that women could use their own names. I'm like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be J.L. Fizzell. <laughs> and, uh, and then it was kind of a nod to just like that feminist movement. And yeah. I'm like, I'm going to do this. If you're not going to stop me just because I'm a woman. <laughs> I love that. And uh, yeah, so I kind of stayed true to that. Just again, those themes that are important to me across my yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, so what has kept you keep on coming back into the poetry? So poetry, when I started, because I've been, like, again, writing for my whole life. Yeah. But there's a point where poetry kind of became um, almost like a coping tool. I was working in schools as, like, um, like mental health support. Yeah. And I did a lot of arts-based stuff with the kids, because that's, that's what I do, <laughs> arts and nature, right? Um, and I'm like, oh, this really works. Like, if it works for them, it's going to work for me. And, like, I just remember feeling really good about it. So if I had a bad day or, you know, relationships were starting to get tricky, I'd sit down and write about it. And they were just kind of like, um, like a brain dump. Like, okay, yeah. I don't, I, I feel good now. I've made sense of this and I can kind of move on. So yeah. it was fun and it was therapeutic. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. So what were some things that you've done with the children in terms of poetry? Like, how would you incorporate that into their yeah so I always try and make things fun with kids because yeah. I remember hating school um which is funny because I love education in school now <laughs> but um I just remember hating school and then things I never I never really connected with it in a way that made sense for me so I was I thought about poetry and I'm like well poetry is kind of a way of hiding what you mean it's a secret message mm -hmm. right you can say one thing but really mean another so I kind of looked at it that way and like listen you don't have to tell me your truth if you're not comfortable you can hide everything you want to say in here but you're going to say it and it's important to give that space right so I, I did a lot of things like that where um you know we try and decode each other's secret messages and try and figure out what we mean wow. and uh guess and then it's fun right yes yeah. for sure <laughs> they don't care if you know their story because you guessed and uh, right. it was kind of a fun way to, to play with that That's and, awesome. yeah i love that um you now have your own little human <laughs> <laughs> has you taken up writing in any form uh not writing but we did a thousand stories before or a thousand books before kindergarten wow. And by the time he was two, so the rule is you can read the same book ten times and it'll count as ten reads. Mm. So by the time he was two, we had already hit a thousand. <laughs> wow. Um, so by, I'm like, okay, by the time he starts kindergarten, he's going to have a thousand individual titles under his belt. And we uh, managed to do it. So <laughs> he's not, uh, he's not so telling him, you know what, he does tell his own stories. Now that I'm thinking about him, like, maybe that's why. <laughs> He does like to make up stories, um, and he really loves books. Yeah. yeah. That's a beautiful gift. <laughs> <I love> that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your books. Yeah. Um, how many have you published so far? Four so far, and I have two that are kind of in the editing stages. Amazing. So, yeah. Um, so you've obviously always imagined yourself to be a poet, uh, an author. Um, so what was the story behind your first book and like what was the intention and was the content made for a book or was it just made and then put into a book? Yeah. So that is a heavy story Yeah. <laughs> and a bit of a long one so I'll try and condense it as much as possible. But back in 2000, my first book was never intended. I, you know, it was one of those dreams that sat in the back of my head but never really thought I was doing anything with it. And back the, towards the end of 2018, I had broken up with a boyfriend at the time, 
and was really confused about some of those feelings because it had been seven years together. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ended up getting in a car crash, and which I don't break, I don't know, I broke his broke a vertebrae, right? He needed spinal surgery, wow. and this was post breakup. So I'm like, I don't know what to do right now because he was in Sault Ste. Marie and. I was in Timmins at the time, and I'm like, well, I still have feelings for you. How do we make this work? Do we make it work? And this was all around the same time that we were considering maybe getting back together. So I just I had so much going on inside of me. Um, and this is like also post breakup where I was thinking about, okay, like, you know what? I get to live life for me. I'm going to go to Germany where my mom's from and just explore. Maybe I'll be a teacher. Like, yeah. life was wide open. And then all of a sudden, it just kind of came crashing down with these feelings, and I didn't know what to do with it. So I started writing. And um, just to kind of try and get it out of me because I didn't really have anyone at the time to talk to mm -hmm. that they like would understand and felt the same way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and then so that was going on, and then for a couple months, and then that New Year's, you know, that was in 2017 when that happened. That New Year's for 2018, I was meeting a friend in Toronto, um, and her brother happened to be there. And I wasn't, I was going to stay single, I was going to travel Europe, I was going to be a teacher, I had this whole big plan, um, and then I met him, and the moment he walked in the door, and I knew him before, he'd been to my house for dinner parties and whatnot, right. and like, you know, he's just been a friend's brother, but there was something that clicked the moment he walked in that door, and I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew, I'm like, no, Jet, this is a bad idea, <laughs> and like, I don't, I've never been a romantic, I've never been a love at first sight kind of person, but there was something that clicked inside of me that said, like, yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Uh, yeah, so um, that week went by, we spent some time together in Toronto yeah. hanging out, and then he went home, and I just couldn't let it go. I'm like, there's something about this person that's just, like, magnetic. So we happened to be going to the same fishing derby in Chapel, so we had made plans to meet there, because right. we have a family cottage. And uh, so we were talking, and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna tell him how I feel. Like this is ridiculous. <laughs> he lives in Sault Ste. Marie. <laughs> Something about this place. Right? Yeah. He lives in Sault Ste. Marie, <laughs> and uh, I'm in Timmins. I have somebody that I still have feelings about, but we're broken it up, and I don't know what to do with any of this. Mm -hmm. I want to go be a teacher. I'm gonna go travel Europe. <laughs> <laughs> so we started talking and I told him how I felt and he's like, yeah, I, I kind of feel the same way and we started dating and um, he's like, you know, these, these poems, I had sent him a poem, that's actually how that one started. I, I was sitting on the plane after a couple glasses of wine could pour in the free yeah, wine, right, which is yeah. probably liquid courage, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I would have done it otherwise. But I sent him a poem that I, I had written for him and he's like, this is amazing and he's like, this is really good. And like he's not a book person. I mean, he'll read them if he has time. A poetry that's so right, like, right, He's right. um yeah. He's he's a veteran and he's into nature and like poetry is so up in the field for him. Yeah. So for him to say, wow, this is really good. So I kept sending him more and more of my stuff, and he's like, you know, you should you should publish this because someone had thrown it out there that I could uh, publish through. Um, I think it was Create Space at the time. Just okay. kind of like self-publish, right? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you need to publish this. Like, you really need to publish this. So I took all the poems um, from when I first broken up with my previous boyfriend to when I met Andrew, um, which is my <laughs> college friend's brother, and up to that point. And I just compiled them all, and I had about, I had about 100 poems. And I added a few more just to kind of keep processing those feelings. Mm -hmm. And by February, I published. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, so with, within a month and a half, I published wow. the first book. And then that same year, I published two others. Wow. So by, yeah, by, by August, I had um, Icarus Anchors and You, Girls and Swine, and Mortal Dreams. I mean, it, yeah, eight months and three books. I think it is something crazy, like 800 pages worth of poetry. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And how much of these time did you actually spend like writing and like? iterating or I don't know I feel like that year I just had so much going on I had this new relationship mm -hmm. this old relationship that I, I didn't really have the proper time to like breathe and kind of make sense of mm -hmm. and there's just so much like a poem would hit me out of nowhere I'd be sitting there like staring at a tree and just all of a sudden like here's a poem or I'd go fishing with my dad and again here's another poem and they just kind of like Thoughts would pop into my head, and I'm like, okay, I just need to turn this into a poem. Yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna mess around in there. That's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> um, so now your latest book. 
Um, you told me that it's your favorite. It and is, yeah. so I want you to tell us about human nature and why it's so special to you. Um, so I think there's something really magical with our relationship with nature. And um, I think sometimes it's hard to remember that when you're living in a city and you don't get out to the forest. Yeah. But something really special happens out there where you can just understand the bigger picture in ways that it doesn't necessarily make sense. Mm -hmm. um, when you're sitting in your backyard or down, you know, down by Bellevue, like it's, it's gorgeous places, right? There's still that element of, of humanity there that kind of... So I really wanted to explore those themes of like the relationship between being a human and being in nature. Mm -hmm. And then the flip side of that is being um, nature being part of our, our human world, right? And just kind of like the changes. So the, the book starts out in summer and then kind of moves through fall, winter, and then back to spring. So it's just really a progression of life moves in cycles mm -hmm. and that idea that it's constantly evolving and changing and that you always know what's coming. <laughs> you know, it can only be good for so long before something's going to trip you up. Yeah. But just that like resilience that you build doing it mm -hmm. over and over and over again and just spending time in nature and going back to that perspective and, and just being open to learning from everything around you, even if it's something as um, mundane as a dandelion growing out of the sidewalk, right? There's always something you can learn from everywhere. Yeah. And that was kind of the inspiration behind the book is just like being kind of... Um, <laughs> Somebody who loves learning, that was that was important to me. That just that forever growth kind of that growth cycle. So yeah. yes, I love I love all the all the points in that. Um, let me think of another question. Um so I guess the first time I heard about you and tucked into your in your work was at French Festival this year and you performed with your husband um who played guitar and you spoke and you spoke your poems, and it was just, it was beautiful. So how often do you get to do performances like that? That was my very first one um, that was intended for the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, when I published Human Nature, I got to do the book launch party for it down the street at the Main Street Cafe, and um, Krista gave me the opportunity to read a few of my poems in front of the, the people who showed up, and that was wonderful. I kind of... I fell in love with the idea of performing in front of people, um, but most of it has been on TikTok, which is another thing I never thought I would do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I got on there and uh, started showing my poetry and kind of performing like one poem at a time to yeah. people. And I just I really love sharing it and being able to bring the poems to life in the way that I envision them. Mm -hmm. And um, while it isn't necessarily about me when you read my poetry, I still kind of wanted the opportunity to give it life in a way that it doesn't have when it's two dimension. Right. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. You should definitely do more performances. <laughs> I cannot tell that it was your first like, <laughs> time doing that. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's I, uh, I do have a background. I was a loose background um, in uh, like theater and arts okay. and like public speaking, and I love public speaking. So performing wasn't too far of a jump, no, but uh, I've always been kind of like the uh, the background person, the one who pulls all the strings and makes it look nice, but not always the one who's uh right. who's in the front. I'm kind of pushing myself to take more of those yeah. lead roles. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Um, so what other capacities do you share in work? I believe you do workshops. In that yeah. Way. Um. So. I have never really had the time to put as much as I want into what I do. Um, so right now I've done, I've done a lot considering. I've done um, presentations for the high schools, uh, talking to, to the kids about as teenagers. Um, I hated being called a kid. Yeah. As a teen, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, talking to some of the students about poetry, and I remember um, she was trying to inspire them in Northern Ontario and like just overcoming adversity, and that was that was back in Simmons. I did some workshops for the schools um, for some of the younger students, again exploring that idea of poetry and mystery messages and hiding like thoughts and feelings and in whatnot in poetry form. Um, and then I've done workshops through the Timmins Library. I've done a few virtual workshops during COVID and uh, just trying to connect people with uh, the community and poetry as a coping skill. Right? Yeah. So I've done workshops through them. Um, and then I did a workshop through Fringe last year mm -hmm. called uh, Magic Poetry Exploring Magic in the Mundane. Uh, so just again, trying to use those poetry as a coping tool. Yeah. 
And then this year, uh, October 14th, I'm doing poetry in the park as part of the Ontario Culture Days. Okay, yeah. It's so it's a free workshop. Uh, anyone can come out and uh, I'm going to teach poetry again. And yeah. And try and make it accessible because I hated poetry and English teacher. I'm like, I don't care what they meant. <laughs> they might not even know what they meant because I sometimes not great right, and I don't know what I mean. <laughs> so, yes, so I'm trying to like um, cover up some of those scars people might have from English class yeah. and uh, and make poetry a little more accessible to people. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So what if I let's pretend play a little like acting? If I said some things, some statements, or some questions, and you give a response back. Yeah, for sure. So I don't like poetry. What would you just say to someone that says? That's fair. There were lots of points in my life where I hated poetry and it didn't make sense to me. And Sylvia Plath was the worst thing, worst thing that ever happened to me in my <laughs> life. But she's one of my favorites now because I got to take the time to enjoy her on my own terms. Maybe you just haven't had the right poet. Maybe you haven't had the chance to enjoy it without somebody looking down your neck telling you you're wrong or your grades dependent on it or your scholarships are dependent on it. Like, there's so many pieces to it. So right. it's kind of like who was you hated when you were a kid? I always keep coming back to it. Like, do I like it now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. And I mean, if there are inspirational quotes that you like, the same elements are hidden in poetry, right? It's the same right. idea, just longer format. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't write poetry on the rules. There, this is something I love to tell people when I teach my workshops. I'm going to teach you a few rules, and then feel free, feel free to break any of the ones you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I, poetry it, it does not necessarily rules, they're like guidelines, um, obviously you can't write a full page, a paragraph, and call it a poem. Um, there are certain like, you know, line breaks to really help, and there are certain structures there, and there are those who argue with me that even a full paragraph can be a poem if you mm -hmm. write it right. Um, you write it the way you want to, but it's really just about self-expression right. and uh, finding ways to describe things in unique ways. Yeah. Um, I'm not creative. I just don't think like JL Fizzle does. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love this one. Um, I actually picked up my husband a book not too long ago that said the title was Anyone Can Be Creative. Mm -hmm. Or everyone is something that affected everyone is creative. Um, I would argue that everyone is creative, we just have different ways of expressing it, and creativity is really the art of self-expression. Some people do that with a paintbrush, some people do it with pens, some people are out in the garden doing it, or painting, and um, it isn't really about how good you are or your skill level, because someone's always going to be there to tell you the best thing ever, and there's always going to be someone there to tell you that they don't like your work. <laughs> yes. uh, even the grace, right? Um, so yeah, creativity is just is self-expression, and if you can be honest with yourself, then you're creative. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that. Um, I don't know if that was very good. Um, maybe I'm struggling right now, I'm not doing great state. How can I use poetry to help me? Okay, for sure. So, my mind races a lot, usually at 11 p.m. when I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> um, not so much since I started writing, but that was always the thing for me. And poetry is kind of a way to take those racing thoughts, those bouncing things in your head, and make them concrete for a second. So that you can look at it and make sense of it in a way that you can't necessarily do when you can't see it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm a writer myself, but I want to publish a book and share my work, but I'm not confident and don't know how. <laughs> so, I wasn't confident when I started either, and I've come to a point where I feel like every story matters, and none of us have the power to tell anyone else, or them have the power, we have the power, but we don't have the right to tell anybody that their story doesn't matter, that their words don't matter, that they shouldn't take up space. Everybody deserves to hold space. And my, my thing when I write is that this isn't about fame, it's not about the paycheck, believe me, it's not about the paycheck, um, uh, but it's about you want to, this is something you want to do, so make it happen. If you want to wear the blue shirt in the morning, you put the blue shirt on. If you want to publish the book, you publish the book, um, and just see what happens, and if nothing happens, then at least you've got to make it happen and see. Um, 
And then as far as how, there are a lot of different, uh, there are like small publishers you can reach out to and be like, hey, I have this manuscript, are you willing to read it? Um, there are bigger publishers again, that you can, you can send query letters to, and they have everything you need on their website. So you send them a letter. Some of them want PC or manuscripts, some of them want the whole thing. It's really about figuring out what the publishers want. Um, which is why I chose to self publish. <laughs> I just finished telling people that I got a piece in the rules of break it, and I, I self published because I just really wanted the, the creative freedom. And there are a ton of independent publishing platforms. I'm using, um, it, it originally started out as Create Space, but it's now Kindle, Kindle Publishing. So okay. yeah, KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. But there are a whole bunch of other ones out there um, that are Canadian that you can, you can attack to. I just, Amazon yeah, so, yeah. That's, that's awesome. awesome. I love thanks for playing. Is there anything else you want to share with us today? Anything else that we were kind of talking about? Uh, I feel like I have a million stories. I just don't know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know that so I was talking a little bit earlier about how I was I wanted to be an author, but I ended up in poetry. And I'm kind of toying with the idea. I haven't settled on a plot line yet. I have 3,000 in front of my head. But uh, my mom's from Germany originally. So, Northern Ontario, when I was growing up, was kind of like this. I'm here. Yep. Uh, you took me to go see castles, and now I'm back. <laughs> we had to drive nine hours of trees and rocks to this little town in the middle of nowhere, and like move a bowling alley and a mini putt course. Like, this is it. This is my life. Like, how could you? <laughs> so, growing up, I just didn't get Northern Ontario in ways that I kind of understand it now. And I feel like the more I get out and explore the world, the more I come back and I'm like, yeah, this is. This is home, um, but I really want, at some point in my life, to take my mom's heritage and you know, me and all the things, I guess it's my heritage too, um, but all the things that I love about that, and all the lore, and all the really cool stories, and then take them and kind of bring them back to Northern Ontario and write a story that blends the two of them together kind of seamlessly. Um, yeah. And then really just like focus on everything I can to help the people here understand that like, yeah, Northern Ontario has, it, maybe not so, so much you can't but Timmins is like minus 50. Like school closed for a month in January, right? Now, right? Like, <laughs> maybe not that bad, but I remember like there's a good two weeks out of the year you could bank on like cold days, not even snow days, cold days. It was too cold to leave the house. <laughs> And that can be hard because like there's no you know winter is not it's cold and there's a lot of snow. Not everybody has a snowblower. Um, not everybody's got a car, and there's been a lot of sun. Some people struggle with like seasonal affective disorder, and then like so there's all of that. And then you get to summer, and you're like, okay, well if you're not a nature person and you don't have you know maybe a lot of connections, like it, just, it can be hard if you're. It's, um, I always think of Northern Ontario as, like, the last frontier. Yeah. <laughs> or I really do feel like we have some of those, like, harsher elements, like, when you think of Canada's, and I'm sure they, <laughs> the comparison's a stretch, because, I mean, early, early settlers had, uh, they, they wouldn't be here if <laughs> people hadn't helped them out. Like, it was rough here, yes. right? And that roughness still kind of exists in Northern Ontario, not to the same extent, but, like, we're a little more rugged, a little bit more frontier, and it's, it's hard. It takes a certain kind of person to make this place home. And I just really want to focus on, like, you know, kind of inspiring that and people, like, you made it. Like, you've done it. Like, you've done the minus 50 winters. Like, you can handle anything <laughs> that life throws your way. And kind of just use that to inspire people and, and build resilience and capacity in people. So, yeah, I'm hoping eventually to turn that into more, like, not scattered workshops, but more like permanent, structured, really mm -hmm. kind of kind of things for people. And like you know, having a background in mental health, I'm always looking at things from that perspective, yeah. right? Like capacity building, resilience, self-esteem, like all the things that keep people going. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and especially especially like you, because I remember struggling so bad and really hating it up here and just like itching to get out and not just not understanding what we have here. So yeah, I love. Beautiful. Beautiful <laughs> work. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the biggest takeaway I take from your work is to see the beauty in what's in front of us. And that's yeah. a big, like a big takeaway, for sure, from your 
performance from heavily from this book, Human Nature. Um, that was the biggest. Yeah, and that's it's been such a theme throughout my life. Like I, I feel like I look at my story and I'm like, what is this? And like other people don't have a life that looks like this, but it's really kind of created something in me. Like my dad got sick when I was young. He is uh, naturally he got the same disease. I have. I just found out that I have it. Um, he got uh, Alport's disease and his kidneys failed and my again, eight or nine. Um, so yeah, so my life is again. So I had like the immigrant mother, the sick dad. And, and like my life has always been like this crazy story of like why is this happening? Like why is this so much? And just trying to turn it into something and make something of it. And like life gets hard and like the best thing you can do is just like keep going and just keep reminding yourself, like, I've already done this and somewhere or another I have got this. And yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Um is there obviously your poetry is very fitting of the middle of life and the podcast here. <laughs> that uh, I didn't really get to talk about two of the two of the books that I'm working on right now. Yeah. So I'll start with the first one. Um, so when I was here at the Sea Museum a couple weeks ago doing Northern Soul, exploring our wild ways, I realized that I already had everything I needed to make a book. And um, so I wanted to take those poems, there are 19 of them, and then add some of the photography in there and create like a little chat book, right? Yes. Um, so I have the cover, I have the poems, I just have to pick the photos. And uh, when I was doing that project, um, my stepfather-in-law's dad, uh, John Cernigoy, had like thousands of photos, and I had asked uh, his son, I'm like, can I look through these? And so I spent two months looking through thousands and thousands of photos, picking up my favorite, and now I'm like, I have to go back and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and not just his, but uh, mine too. I think I'm gonna use primarily his and mine, so yeah. that's kind of the, the soul of that. And uh, yeah, so I have everything I need. I just need to sit down and do it and make some time for it. Somewhere between now and poetry in the park and everything else like, yes, yes. Uh, taking on. But before that, I um, have a book that I've been working on for a while called Note to Self. Okay. And the idea is a poetry book, but it's kind of like there are different themes in life that happen. You know, like bad relationships, um, so like breakups and that kind of thing. Um, or, you know, just trying to find the right person. And there's like, you know, f familial stuff, friendship stuff, work stuff, self-esteem stuff, growth stuff. And so like little chapters based on this and like the poems are like a note to self for whatever you're going through. So you can kind of flip through the index and just kind of see what's there that might, uh, yeah. And the idea is, um, I go back and I read a lot of my own poetry. I'm like, wow, Jess, that was pretty insightful. <laughs> Why are we not listening to ourselves? <laughs> yeah. So I thought I'm like, I wonder if I took like the biggest lessons that I've learned in life and turn it into a book and kind of, um, I do a little legwork for people and hopefully they can learn from my mistakes and my experiences and then kind of, um, almost like a legacy piece for my son. You know what I mean? Like I remember mm -hmm. growing up and listening to my parents, I'm like, yeah, okay guys, like that's <laughs> And just not really like taking their advice to heart because yeah. it, it wasn't, but um, maybe I remember reading through my dad's poems and like, oh, I really like that. Cause my, my dad writes poetry wow. too, right? He was, um, yeah. I, I wouldn't say an inspiration, but he was kind of the one that introduced me to the concept. He was right. always writing poems for my mom and, and for me and my, 
Um, yeah, so I, I read through some of those and just sort of like even reading through some of my mom's old diaries and trying to like translate it. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And like, <laughs> so just trying to make some of those lessons that we want to like give people yes. a little more approachable, right? Because yeah. sometimes talking isn't always the, it's like in one ear or the other. Like it just doesn't always resonate. You're always in the headspace. Yeah. And so, yeah. And then um, just have something that I can give back to kind of again, like, all the little Jesses out there who are like hiding when you're like, I'm not writing poetry, like really just about coming into your own and accepting who you are and just kind of rolling with it and enjoying it and be the fairy princess running through the forest yeah. with your poems. Like if that's what you want to do, hat on back. Like I say fairy princess, but I should really <laughs> paint a picture for you of that because I, I say fairy princess because I didn't really have any other like fairy tale analogies to go off of. That was the most like magical forest thing that I could think of. But this was little Jess with her plaid shirt, hat on, baseball cap on backwards, like full on tomboy running out of the forest. Yeah. Um, and yeah, just to just embrace those parts of you and stop hiding it. Stop mm-hmm. like, you know, I remember little Jess was like, I don't want to be German. I don't want to be blonde. I don't want blue eyes. Like, like I just don't want to write poetry. And I just, I, I feel like I just, pushed away so much of myself and I really just want to help people embrace like who they are like yeah. there's one you and you are amazing and stop trying to tell somebody else's story that story is already told yeah. that yeah. and uh yours will never be a good one if you're trying to imitate someone else's for sure so, yeah for sure yeah and then um part of that too was I was talking a little bit about how my dad had all ports on um, yeah. a kidney transplant this is actually my mom who gave him the oh. kidney um which is crazy because she's from like she was a better mark match than his own brothers and she's from the other side of the world like just crazy crazy story so then during covid um my little guy got sick and ended up in the hospital and um they were looking at his kidneys and like yeah there's something not quite right with these Mm -hmm. and uh so they thought that it was covid because it was doing that to kids who are who are hospitalized and they did more testing and more testing and more testing. And a couple months later, they're like, so he has all ports. Mm. And uh, does anyone else in your family, or they, he has kidney disease, we're looking, they asked all our history. So my dad's history and my history. And I started to connect some of those dots. And like, something tells me that we all have this. This is like a, a genetic thing. Um, so yeah, there's that. And then I just started to think about that. And like one day the doctor's like, yeah, so you have Elports and your son has Elports. And uh, and my dad didn't even know he had it. They just told him he had nephritis, which is like a general um, term for like inflammation in the kidneys. Okay. And it's not a real diagnosis. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all of a sudden, like all three of us were like, oh, okay. So now what? Yeah. Um, so luckily we're all we're all healthy at this mm-hmm. point but it's just one of those things in the back of your head that's always like you've got to do something with your life because you never know when it's going to hit you you never know you know the next your next checkup is that going to be the one where everything flips is it um and to just make the most of it and always just chase those dreams mm-hmm. and make the best of it and i uh i'm hoping eventually to do something with that and kind of uh help out so far it's turned into the um the uh, Kidney Foundation. I was writing mm. poems last year, so I write commissions for people. Um, it's not a well-known thing, but birthdays, weddings, family kind of like gifts, right? Um, so for last summer, I chose to donate all the money I made from commissions for mm. that summer to the, the Kidney Foundation. And I'm I'm hoping to do it again at some point soon and kind of just keep raising money that way and awareness because I uh, even doctor's offices I'm like, yeah, so I have Alport's now. What? What is that? <laughs> it's a really rare uh, genetic disorder right. that gets passed down through like the X chromosome. I know I know a lot about it, but I don't know a lot about it. But yeah. Right. So yeah, I'm really hoping to kind of find ways to keep like giving back that way too. Yeah. And yeah, I did their Christmas market last year, which was a lot of fun, and oh. just helping out different ways yeah. like that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important message for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep living like <laughs> you want to live. And yeah. I feel like I already feel like everything up until this point has kind of like solidified that for me, and now it's my turn to go at least be that light yeah. Yeah. For, for other people. Yeah, definitely an inspiration. Yeah. I've resonated with everything that you said <laughs> today. It's beautiful. Awesome. Okay, <laughs> anything else? Uh, no, I think that's that's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that Poetry in the Park is uh, yes. going to be yes. fun and that people will come out and uh, learn some poetry and have fun with it and just play around. And most of it's just ridiculous games. 
um, to try and get people like comfortable right. with the idea, but you still get to walk home with your own poem and your own piece, which is uh, pretty exciting. So, yeah. yeah, tell us the details on how we can learn more. Yeah, and... so Ontario Culture Days, uh, their website. If you okay. look up Sault Ste. Marie, I'm part of a community hub, and you'll find me along with all sorts of other people. And I think. I think you guys are actually part yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do culture raise. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, the Old Stone House, and I think the Bush Plain too. There's a whole bunch of people yeah. in the studio doing awesome stuff, and most of the events are free or pay what you can. Yeah. Um, so yeah, mine's completely free, and it's the tickets are online, but you don't need tickets. Just come and show up. If I end up with 100 people and I said 25, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, thank you again. Thank you. <laughs>